Hi everyone, Kate here with my 2019 Nonfiction November TBR. So last year's Nonfiction November was slightly more successful than the previous years. Uh, I think I read three, but I made a huge list. There was so much more that I wanted to read and what happened is I hit a couple duds and then kind of lost traction because it's not a genre I read much and so it was just kind of a bummer and so I'm hoping for better results this year. A couple recycled choices and I will just tell you about the books that I picked. Now some of these I know can match the lovely challenges that Olive did but I did not have my act together enough to have selected which ones would match which challenges and I have a uh, brief stint of time before nap time is done. So I just wanted to jump into it. So you can see Olive's video that I have linked down below because they are great challenges. I just, like I said, did not have my act together to um, organize my TBR in that manner. And the first one that I will be reading is This Golden Fleece, A Journey Through Britain's Knitted History. I've already mentioned this several times on Insta Stories um, and on my Knitting in the Victorian Age video. This is by Esther Rudder. There, are, there is a uh, picture section in, uh, in there and also uh, just it seems to be what a really, really great resource for those who love knitting and crocheting, um, fiber art, and uh, just really uh, an involved in-depth history of knitting. So I just love the connection that I feel to women of the past when I am knitting or doing any handicraft. It's just a really special thing. So I'm really looking forward to this. And the cover, what I love is it's made out of different knitted fabrics, but it is a field with sheep in it. So it's really wonderful and really, really pleased to have that. Uh, then a book that Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings and Charlotte from Tired Mama Tries to Read really made me interested in is Roseanne Alexander's Waterfalls of Stars. This is a memoir about she and her husband moved to the island of Skomer and they were wards of the island. It's this really kind of isolated island off the coast of, is it Wales? Oh, I should know my geography better. It doesn't say where specifically it's off the coast of. Anyhow, it's uninhabited except for them. Like they're the only people there there are puffins. Um, so those details alone sold me on it, but it's supposed to have incredibly lyrical nature writing. And we all know Kate loves beautiful nature writing. I'm very excited about this. Um, this and this golden fleece are my like most anticipated ones. Then a recycle from last year is wild swans, uh, by Jung Cheng. And this has become more intimidating to me as time has gone on. Uh, Amanda Jenner recommended it on her channel and made me want to read it. And then I saw this at a used bookstore and picked it up. Uh, but it does seem very detail heavy and um, or very like data heavy, I should say. So I, I do want to read it, but I'm feeling quite intimidated. So my hope is that I could read a chapter a day. Um, and it looks like there are 29 chapters, I think. Uh, so hopefully if I just stick at it and read a chapter a day, I'm hoping that it will be a lot more approachable than my my fear of it. Then the next ones uh, are all ones I will be picking up at the library. And the first one is Eden's Outcast by John Madison. And this is the very first book in myself and Megan Hannett's uh, Year of Louisa May project. So I will link that announcement video down below. We're very excited about this project where we will be reading almost a year, uh, a year long through different Louisa May Alcott novels. But starting out in nonfiction November, we will be reading a biography specifically honing in and focusing on Louisa and her father, Branson Alcott. And it just looks to be a really great one that a lot of Louisa May Alcott fans love. And it won the Pulitzer Prize, which I did not know before we picked it. Then I want to read Own Your Life by Sally Clarkson. Sally Clarkson is a Christian author and speaker. She has the most amazing podcast uh, called At Home with Sally. So for any like stay at home moms or working moms, just mothers in general. I, I implore you to listen to this podcast. She just has the most, um, eloquent ways of, uh, talking about 
just how uh, your walk with Jesus is going. And she's so encouraging. I feel so encouraged in my faith whenever I listen to her. And so this book, Own Your Life, is kind of about I think kind of taking on the challenges of life as they come and still kind of seeing the bigger picture when you're stuck in the daily grind of cooking and cleaning and taking care of little ones and seeing how significant all of these little things can be and how we need to view them uh, through that lens. Then another Christian nonfiction I want to read is The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. Uh, I was looking for like classic Christian nonfiction and A.W. Tozer was an author who popped up a lot. Uh, I think he was just somebody that was really encouraging to a, a lot of people and I want to read him because I've heard about him a lot and I just want to investigate more. Um, then I want to read Honey for a Woman's Heart. This is a book about books uh, and it's basically there's a children's version called Honey for a Child's Heart which I also need to read that. Uh, Honey for a Woman's Heart is just recommendations of really excellent novels out there. Maybe some nonfiction, I'm not sure, but it's a book that I've been meaning to get to and so I want to take up uh, the opportunity this month to get to it. And then also The Enchanted Hour by Megan Cox Gurdon and she is somebody who writes for, I'm pretty sure it's The New Yorker, she has a column she's done for years on children's literature and then I also heard her interviewed on the Read Aloud Revival podcast and she was so just winsome and warm and uh, didn't come across as like a stuffy academic. I just really liked her in that. And so The Enchanted Hour is just on all of the merits of reading aloud to your children, what a gift it is to them and how it makes them reading ready. And it's just makes for a really fun family culture. And, you know, when we're stuck at home a lot, reading aloud is just a wonderful, wonderful oasis. So I want to read this book by her and I was really happy the library had it. Uh, then I want to read Loving the Little Years, Life in the Trenches by Rachel Jankovic. So this is uh, written, it's a book from a mother written to encourage other mothers uh, in this time uh, when it can just seem, the, the results of your, your labors can be pretty intangible when you're taking care of little ones. And I've heard from my sister-in-law that this is an incredibly encouraging and edifying book. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one. I actually did buy this one on Kindle because the library did not have it. So I don't really enjoy reading eBooks that much, but I'll do it when it's necessary. The next one I want to read is another Christian nonfiction. I'm just taking this opportunity to really bulk up on those because I really meant to read more throughout 2019 and I didn't do it. So I really do want to do better about nonfiction. Um, but the next one is A Place of Healing by Johnny Erickson Tata. And Johnny Erickson Tata is a Christian author, speaker, and a really amazing painter who had a diving accident when I'm pretty sure she was in her early 20s and became a paraplegic and has really been such an encouragement to people to have joy in the midst of that situation. And then as if that wasn't kind of enough of a big challenge to have, she's now had chronic pain, intense, immense amounts of chronic pain for years and years. Um, so it's her writing about kind of how can you uh, have joy through a time like this? How can you trust God when he's allowing things like, awful, awful things like this to happen? Um, and kind of seeing the bigger picture. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think I hopefully will see a bit of myself in her writing because I do not have chronic pain. And I really, really feel for anybody who's watching, if you have chronic pain, I am so sorry. It just sounds awful. So I have um, other things. I have really intense fatigue and other symptoms, but not chronic pain. But I still think it will be really encouraging to me when um, I feel often kind of that like my physical health has really let me down and I feel very not positive about that. This will be really encouraging and to see like, oh, it could always be worse. <laughs> it could always be worse. And then last on the list is an author that I cannot believe I have not read anything by him yet, but that is Mark Twain. And I know, I know he's so like iconic. He's such an iconic American author. And I kind of have an idea of trying to slowly read through Mark Twain's works, I have a feeling I will like him. I could be totally wrong, but his autobiographies, which he allowed, or his autobiography, there are three volumes, but he allowed them to be released 100 years after his death. And uh, the audiobook of the first volume is available. And I thought that would be a really fun audiobook because my dad has read me snippets 
uh, out of it. And it's incredibly funny, the parts that he read. Uh, particularly the, the bit that he read was um, somebody, I think it's Mark Twain himself, takes a melon and drops it on someone's head out of a window. And it was just written in such a way that was really funny. Uh, so I'm hoping this could be the start of a beautiful friendship with Mark Twain's writing. Um, we'll see what happens, but I would love, I think it's kind of an odd place to start with an autobiography, but I have a good feeling about it. I don't know. I, I've been wrong before about an author that I thought I would like, uh, authors I thought I would like. I'm hoping for good things though. So I do have, I have, you know, I scoured Overdrive for all of the nonfiction audiobooks they have. I've been watching other people's TBR. So there's so much more that kind of intrigued me and that I wanted to see, but I thought, why don't I just the list I put up in my booktube TBR, uh, make it the top priority books. So those are my top priority books, the ones I really want to get to and I'm hoping I love. And yeah, so if you are participating in Nonfiction November, let me know what you'll be reading. I am hoping this will be my most successful Nonfiction November. And I was thinking about it as well when I was feeling kind of like when I hit reading slumps in this year, I should have thought of nonfiction because my normal reading slump antidote is mysteries are mysteries, but I was in a mystery slump this year. So hindsight is 2020. We'll just see how this nonfiction November goes. I am looking forward to telling you all about it later and have a lovely day.